Good evening, everybody. Welcome to In a Circle Back as is the norm on a Wednesday evening. And as always, delighted to see you all here. Welcome, one and all, to this part two of um, a three part session on trailing stops. Uh, in that first session, we sort of covered the principles of training stops. And of course, um, we want to take that to the next level. We want to take you to the next level in terms of uh, giving you some choices about how you manage profit risk. Just to reiterate what we covered last time, uh, if you didn't make it last time, what I will do is I'll put the link, uh, which is Monday, I'll put the link into chat so you can go and review it. But what I wanted to do is this three part series to really have a deeper dive into trial stops. So uh, really in the previous session, we discussed the concept of trading stocks. What we're trying to do is reduce the amount we give back to markets in profitable trade trades and provided guidance on a few specific approaches. Uh, price EMA cross, uh, which I'm going to revisit tonight, just an example. A signal line on the MACD, uh, key levels, using key levels as a uh, Way of trading so you know, that's ATR level support resistance we focused on and we discussed um a partial close of trial one of the things that i didn't cover which is not dissimilar in terms of execution that the signal line on the macd was the parabolic sar so let's say we wanted to trade the short short trade here then one thing that we could do is we could put a parabolic sar on this and just look watch for the dots okay so watch what we're wanting with the parabolic SEIs, we'd have to check on every candle. So it does need monitoring. And there is a point of, in this short trade that we'll get out. So again, as soon as that trend looks as though it's changing, the SAR dot goes the opposite side of the trend that it's just been in. And that's a, another way of trading, but it is, in terms of execution, it is something that you have to go back and do it. And so consequently, it, it does merit using the concept of a safety stop as well which you may use um, an MA or even the system stop on that. We also talked about the concept very briefly about using multiple trails. And what I mean by that is you have several trails. So it's, it's uh, whichever is triggered first, which is an approach we tend to use with the EAs. So uh, that is uh, also was also part very briefly of Monday's session. Now on to... Uh, now, one of the ex we, we did have one slide on variable trials just to frame this and the next session. So, what we're going to focus on today is price velocity as a challenge. So, if we look and that, so essentially the speed at which the price moves in your direction um, is what we're talking about, and, and of course the most common manifestation of this is subsequent to technical events i.e when there's a breakout uh, when we then get buyers piling in possibly a trigger of a lot of buy stops um, or um, economic events of course of um, eg what's happening in a couple of hours time we expect significant movements if there's any deviation at all from what's expected and what that means is that sometimes the trails we use don't catch up or or will be in a position where we're given an awful lot back so let's find an example of this let's find a good example of this okay so Let's say we were to enter. Uh, it's not the best example in the world. Let me find a better example than that. That's not bad. Oh, well, no, let's use this for right now, and then we'll we'll find a, another example just to really run the point home. Uh, okay, so let's say we were to enter this. Put your pen on, Mike. Uh, let's say we were to enter on this candle here on the back of a breakout trade to the downside, okay, or, or a breach of a pivot. Um, we may put a stop here um, just above that pivot. So maybe at 131.20, um, which would be a 15 pip uh, stop. 
Now it bimbles it down fairly nicely, but then there's a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a sort of acceleration of it here. Uh, so if we look at the gap between here and here, where it closed on this candle, uh, this is now, if we measure that in pips, uh, around about 31 pips. Okay, so almost double our original risk of 16 pips or so. So do we want to give all that back if we wait until our stop is triggered if we're using the 20 ema for example then we're going to give this back even if it's a touch we'll be giving it back there you know close will be giving everything back <clears throat> so what we may do is choose to alter the parameters if we get an acceleration so that's a small example where we're giving 32 pip backs 32 pips back when our original risk when we entered the trade was 16 pips between current price and stop if we look at something different if we look at gb pound yen as an example um, we're wanting a really high velocity move okay so let's bring it in so you can see this a bit better uh doesn't matter what time frame, the, the rules of the game are the same. Let's put on a 15 minute chart, just see what happened. Okay, let's use a 15 minute chart. So let's say we entered on this. There's the uh, there's a key level that was support for uh, essentially one, two, three, four, five, six, six candles out of seven. It tested this line at 185.48. So we could have legitimately uh, got into a trade at this point here and possibly placed our stop at this point here so our original risk on this is essentially 27 pips at the low point of this we have 76 points sorry 70 78 pips 786 points okay so just to reiterate that, so our initial risk was around about 29 pips. And now, at this point here, if we are using the 20 EMA, then on that close, then our risk is more than two times our original risk. Okay, so we're now risking, in terms of current price at that point, we're now risking uh, 72 pips. Now, that was a heck of a move. And this is often what happens so if we adhere to our 20 ema even with a touch we wouldn't be out until this point which means our gain on this has been reduced because of that sharp velocity of the move uh, our gain has has been reduced to 20 20 pips okay so we're given back 50 pips from its its biggest level does that make sense so is that okay? Well, no, it's not okay. Does that mean we're going to be able to retain most of that? Well, maybe we're lucky enough to have a profit target down here. Um, profit targets another uh, another session we might revisit, I guess, after this three part series. Uh, although it's not that long ago since we did profit targets. Um, uh, one more example, just to hammer this home. Let's look maybe at the GB pound Aussie. Uh, here's a good example let's say we entered so we can see here on this line chart we've got what looks like a sort of triple top formation uh, with a closed price and that's just that's uh, okay so that's actually a pivot level uh so that's the r1 pivot it's bre breached you can say it's a double top, triple top whichever whatever your way you call want to call it but whichever way you slice it um there's a breach and um, we could get in at this point here okay so let's say we got in at 196.71 um and we're using a 20 ema as our trail uh so we use our 20 ema on a trail as a trail which is this yellow line here and we i just want to 
or check this is the 20. I guess it doesn't matter, but it is the 20. Okay. So we get out here, and what we do is we essentially make 14 pips. However, at its low point, at its low close, during this, during the lifetime of the trade, this low close here was 39 pips away. Okay. Our risk would have been above this line here. So our risk probably would have been somewhere in the region of, uh, let's say 13, let's say 13 pips because it makes the maths easy. Okay, but it will be back over this line here, 13 pip stop, and it's gone down 39 pips from our entry. So three times our risk level we're now risking. What we end up doing is rather than ending up 13, uh, let's say 39 pips to the um, in profit, we end up, end up giving most of that back. Uh, so we've given two thirds of that back and we are we get here so that's the problem we are trying to solve okay so this is far better usually uh, now obviously this is turning down again and that's fine sometimes that happens uh, but it could quite easily have continued up from this point it didn't because we had if we trailed using levels it would have probably been the same would have trailed down to that level there and it would have been here if we looked at the macd now there's the MACD on the bottom. We would have been out on this candle here. So it'd be the same candle we'd be out on. And if we looked at the parabolic SAR, let's just continue this. We would have been out on the candle after, in fact. So about the same. So whichever one of those trail stop mechanisms were used, they would all be exiting at the same point. Okay, so there's the problem. What's the solution? Well, the solution could be that if we get a high velocity move, then we could reposition the parameters. Should we get rid of that? Raise uh, all drawings. There we go. We can adjust the, the trail stop parameters in the trade. Uh, and this is what we started to talk about when we met on Monday. So having identified what the problem is, um, and despite trail stop still giving too damn much back to the market, I'm going to call it the velocity gap for one of a new bit of terminology. So it seems logical to look at, look at the next level approaches. OK, now, for the purposes of this session, we're going to use the price EMA cross as the example, but the same principle would be applied to any of those trail stops. Um, so I'm going to present two approaches that we could use. And what I want you to do as an outcome from this is if you have got a trail stop, if you haven't got any trail stop system in place, you've got already got a challenge to perform, which is use the price EMA cross on your last 10 trades and see what the difference it might have made. I'm going to use that just to follow through. And what I'm going to ask you to do is try these or if you are using a trail stop already, if you didn't follow your plan, then you can't use it as easily, as robustly in terms of data. But what I want you to do is try this out. Now, just to give you, so this was actually part of a new system we we developed that pre the EA course, uh, where we're looking at a new system and that was created into an EA and, and actually worked really well. So we have got some evidence that this is a good thing. VG velocity gap, absolutely. I, I like the idea of that. Okay, so okay, so that's the challenge. That's the outcome I want you is it's not only to understand what we're talking about here, but be able to go back and give it a look in terms of in terms of real deal trades that have happened. And as we discussed in that slide, there are three approaches we're gonna or three things we're gonna need to have in place to be able to do this, i.e., a written in your trading plan. So first of all, what would be the market or technical event which would trigger this? Whenever we're thinking of adjusting some um, something intra-trade, these are the three things that we need to have in place. So, what's the trigger? How is it affected? And what are the change? Oh, sorry. What's affected? And how is what's our response? What are the changes and parameters on our trigger? So, in terms of if we were to use a price MA cross, the event might be, as I've said, there is a a specific gap. 
uh, that has developed this velocity gap has been uh, at whatever level you choose has been triggered. We're going to use it on our slice MA cross. Um, we're going to make a change, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. Well, the, the principle is exactly the same. As I said, we're just going to use the price MA for example. If we had, we were using a, a, a MACD signal line, then we can use that velocity gap again. So when there's a gap there uh, that says, well, look, this is not going to be triggered for some time. OK, so what you will get there with the MACD is essentially, if we just look, look at the chart, you can see here we're at our top of our histogram bars. That's when the moving averages are, are most apart, which is what the MACD shows. And it could be quite some time. In this case, it was one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, four. Uh, four bars later until we get the five bars later. Sorry, if we include this one until we actually got a close beneath. OK, so it's the same deal in terms of uh, and then we could do it, do a response, do a response to that scenario and say, right, OK, well, maybe it's not five bars that we're going to use. If that it's really important that this isn't your standard, your standard is what works generally. And we've tended to find that a close beneath the price EMA is good uh, using your standard settings or maybe a 20 and a 10 on the MACD. Uh, with a seven, uh, a seven uh, SMA signal line, tend to be uh, tend to be good levels. So that's not your standard. This is the variation based on the trigger. If we use the parabolic SAR, we're exactly the same. So the trigger may be the, that that velocity gap. Um, irrespective of how you measure it, you need some sort of trigger, uh, and then of course this in that case would be the parabolic SAR. And we might say right, okay. We can adjust that accordingly. So, two approaches. Um, we could. So, I remember what we're trying to do here is alter according to that price speed, that velocity velocity gap that's been created. And possibly the best way to do that is a distance between a set MA and price. Okay. So, there's two approaches we can use. We can either tighten the MA trail. So, let's say we're using a 20 EMA. We can tighten that to a 10 or even a 5 EMA. And you may even have a, a, at the next level, once you decide that this could be a right thing for you, you could maybe even have two levels. Or you could tighten the time frame. So if you're working on by that, I mean, if your entry is on an hourly chart, and therefore your exit parameters are on an hourly chart and you see something running away, then maybe you switch to a 30 minute chart or even a 15 minute chart. That's what I mean by tightening it. Time frame, and that's an automatic tightening, uh, as I'll show you in a moment. So, if we use that example here of the GB pound Aussie, we'll see there. I'm going to put this, make this a red line where that would have been triggered, so you can see it better when we switch to the other time frame. So, that's where the 20 EMA was at this level on this candle here because it always looks at the previous candle. Obviously, that's what you're going to see when this candle starts. So that's our trail level. So if we switch this to a five minute chart. OK, what you notice with the 20 EMA is that we're actually out at this level here. OK, so what that's done by tightening the time frame. Is giving us an extra 13 pips. So now we're at 53 pips profit. Sorry, now we're at 27 pips profit out of 39 rather than 13 pips profit out of 39. So we've doubled. Uh, we've doubled our profit by doing that simple mechanism on the basis of this velocity gap that we've created on the 15 minute time frame. Uh, let's find another one. Let's. Uh, let's let's look at gold. Gee, that's quite big. OK, so let's say let, let's do a live example. then. so there's our actually let's make that our stop. Let's make this our entry. So at this point, twenty five oh seven, our stop could be placed out around about twenty five or three. OK. At this point here, when it was at our top. 
the distance between so what's that that's a, a four dollar risk at this point there is a ten dollar difference between two five one six and two five two six which was the high of today's session okay so again two and a half times our risk level so if it comes back down and triggers then what we've done is with a let's say this was our entry at this point this point here where we had a 17 dollar potential gain if it comes down and hits here we've got a potentially half our loss sorry half our gain whereas if we uh, went down to the 30 minute uh, would have actually be out on this okay there's the 20 ema on the 30 minute um, so let's say we're in on this move here, and then we would have retained almost $12 out of the uh, potential that we had there. So again, we've done very much better by reducing the time frame when there is a set criteria uh, that is met. Use this, um, we'll come back to gold, and we might use it for this one, and this one as well. When we say tighten it, an MA trail, then what we're talking about is moving from a let's say a 20 to a 10 ema uh, so let's look at this short trade here uh and let's look at it's actually a really bad example now oh, let's look at this short trade here okay so let's say we entered on this candle here on a clear reversal a breach of that level we enter on this one here and if we use the 20 EMA, we would have been out here. And our stop, let's, uh, let's put our stop on our yellow line here. Okay, so we're using the 20 EMA just above the breakout point. Uh, uh, so our stop is at 25.16, let's say 25.17, and it's $7, okay? At this point, the gap between price and MA is 19, is nearly $20. Okay, so almost three times our risk level. So what we can do then is say, right, okay, because what would happen is if it came back and triggered this, then we would give away our $20 and that then would become, uh, this candle here, that would then would become $8. Okay, better than what would have happened if we had had a trail because this would have happened. Okay, so we'd have lost everything plus our stop. So that would have been disastrous in terms of a give back to the market. But if we look here, if if our twenty then became a ten, then we'll be out on this candle here. So we'd retain eleven and a half dollars of our potential twenty. So more than half we would retain rather than giving all away or giving a lot of it away on this candle here down to eight dollars so we've increased our return from being around 40 percent of potential to around about 60 percent of potential okay so the trigger is the velocity gap the trigger is in the examples i've shown has been two times our risk level now it doesn't matter what trigger use i've used that you can you can use atr uh, you can use whatever you want um, two times atr two times risk level would make sense uh, if you want to use two times atr at this point here where we entered this trade uh, the atr was five so if you used a, a one and a half atr then it would be seven and a half atr um, above uh, our entry so it virtually the same to be honest so does that make sense so option one we tighten up our tra our trail by tightening up by making the moving average smaller which means we get out earlier and of course option two is to go down to a lower time frame so let's say we did that on gold i'm going to change this um so that would be our 20 ema which would trigger on that candle there. We could use the 20 EMA on the 30 minute chart. We will be out on this candle here, uh, which is essentially 
just over two dollars better off okay now as i said i can't prescribe which is the best um which is whether you go down a time frame whether you go down two time frames if you went down to 15 of course you would be um there's our green line that's where we actually got out then we'll be out actually here actually not much more than the 30 minute uh in which case we would move we would uh, make about four dollars extra so we're only giving uh, that's about the same as the ma okay option one is to decrease for example from a 20 to a 10 on the ma option two is to decrease the time frame from say an hour to 30 minutes but remember our three per our three key things are we want to have our trigger so what's the trigger so be that a two times risk level be that a, a an atr level and then of course you've got to decide um you've got to decide whether it's atr or entry or, or current atr so that's option one uh is, is using a now level option two having an atr something that responds you can't use points or pips because we we'll talked about this before ad infinitum it's not going to work out very well uh, because each instrument is priced differently and has different volatility um, inherent in how the price moves so you need something that is responsive on your chart to the underlying asset be that a jimmy pound yen be that an aussie kiwi which wouldn't move very much be that a uh, whatever it is they all got different velocity different standard velocities different correlations and different pricing structures so you need something that's going to respond when you change time frames or change mas that is going to be a lot more meaningful than simply a number of points uh, across the board uh 20 points on oh, sorry 20 pips on a on a gb pound yen is very different to 20 pips on an aussie iwi but you can use it it doesn't matter we're not just using this for just to reinforce this we're not just using this for um high volatile situations if we look at the aussie kiwi for example so here's the aussie kiwi uh, let's put it on an hourly chart let's look at this move here so we may have entered we may have entered on this candle here okay we may have put a stop here and that stop and if we use the 20 ema then we'll be out at this point at which it closed beneath that was actually this candle here okay so let's do the maths on this so if we look at our risk level here it was 14 pips at its at its high distance between its high close which is this level here was 35 okay so again about two and a half times risk level or if you want to use the atr at this point here it was 10 pips so we have the potential at its top to take 40 which is four times risk look at the difference at this point here it's 35 points difference between where the ma is so that's given whatever 35 out of 40 years in percentage terms what's that that's about uh let's call it 75 percent shall we is that fair 70 percent so we're giving 70 percent of our potential profit back or 70 percent difference between um max profit and where our ma is right now of course that gets slightly better we only give back 14 pips now what if we'd use the um what if we'd use the concept of so rather than gaining 14 pips we use the concept here we don't actually gain very much on this can't see that but we still managed to squeak out around about 25 pips rather than 14 pips 25 pips out of 40 is a lot better than 14 out of 40. that's through using the i just want to mark this so i can find it easily again if we went down to a 30 minute chart uh there's our entry okay and if our we tightened it up if we sorry if we just went down uh and still used uh if we just went down a, a a time frame and just used the i'll make this green so you can see the difference and just use the 20 ema but this candle we were out on so rather than the 14 pips we would have gained there was our entry 
we would have gained 29 pips out of 40. So again, we've improved our outcome significantly, doubled our profit in that position by having this variable trail based on this velocity gap that I talked about earlier. 87.5%, thanks Wayne, for working that out. So we're given, so we're potentially 87%, and you can even do it as a percent if you want. Um, again, I would be reluctant to do that because uh, it's better than points, but it's still a bit wobbly in terms of being robust. Um, so an ATR level or, or a, sorry, a multiple of ATR or a multiple of risk um would make sense to me but well, either way you can see in every example i've shown by doing that you've there's not one single trade where it's been where it's failed to give you a better outcome does that make sense give me some feedback in the questions box how's that sounding to you guys cool okay lots of goods now again to um just to sort of go back to this so those are our two approaches but you need to acknowledge the risks that first trade we we did we got triggered on either on either case which was though the first trade i think we looked at was the gb pound gb pound aussie but when we got out here and then it dropped and it's still dropping actually this is a really nice chart uh this would be the low close for the day it's interesting so we are seeing some GB pound weakness, where we maybe um, there's only 10 pips to that S1 level. Keep an eye on 96.14. Feeling brave. Obviously, the impact on the GB pound Aussie would be less than any of the US dollar pairs, but there still would be an impact. Uh, my guess is that if that inflation number is hot, uh, you'll see that Aussie uh, suffer more than the GB pound, um, vice versa, of course. Okay. Anyway, that was a little side issue. Because it was an interesting chart. So in this case, by using the trail, uh, you with any trail, you are always potentially risking it continuing. But of course, you if you've got a plan to say, right, this is a trend continuation, you can get back in here. Bearing in mind that this doing this is not as high a probability as this doing this. Does that make sense? So the reality is that don't get FOMO, put your FOMO to bed. What you want to do is to retain as much profit in trades that go your way as possible. And of course, by having a number of different systems, um, i.e. you've got a breakout system or a reversal system, then you're in a position to be able to take advantage of the next higher probability move. So, But that is a risk. It is also a risk that it might not make a difference at all. It's also a risk that if you're using one type of trail, and you do it on one type of trail that may produce a, a worse result than using a different status type of trail um, but these are all risks which are fairly minimal compared to the possibility of locking in double the gains which you've seen on a few occasions when we've looked at and this was just charts as they came to me it wasn't anything uh, does it work on stocks well tell me so if we'd have looked at this run here on Sunfire, then we wouldn't have actually been triggered by a 20 EMA with a close below until this one here. In here, was there a velocity gap there? Okay, so let's say we entered on this one here. We'll probably put the stop there. So around about around about 40 difference, 60 difference. There's no high close, 55 difference. So none of the no at no time within this was there a gap which was more than two risk level. No time. Does that make sense? So that would not trigger. Let's have a look at another one. Okay, let's say we're in GYG. Let's say we got in on this candle here. And let's say we decide to place a stop here. That would be a reasonable place to place a stop. Uh, the difference between tree and that level there so we're basing the stop on it being below this last retracement uh would be two and a half dollars okay and let's say we're using the 20 as a trail the difference now would be from there to there would be six dollars so way in excess of our of our risk level okay so do that again the risk level here is 
as I said, is around about $2.50. The risk here, down back down to that 200 MA, if it dropped tomorrow, the risk here is, or dropped over the next couple of days, uh, the risk here is $5. So double, uh, $6 nearly. So I need to do maths better. Uh, so the risk here is, yeah, is five and a half dollars. So again, over 280R. So what we'll do is we, rather than our stop being the 20, so here, which will put us in a loss situation, we're now moving it up to the 10. Okay, so our worst situation is this. Now we're still in a situation where we are essentially 28, uh, sorry, 38, 56 to 42. So we're about what three dollars fifty. So if this moves again tomorrow, then what we can do is we can say, right, okay, we're going to move this to a five. So if it goes up again, and then we use. So if it becomes more than two times our risk level tomorrow, then we can do exactly the same again and take it down again. So yes, it can work on stocks. Uh, is the answer to the question. Obviously, you've got to go back and test this. And that's one of the reasons I want you, to, for those of you using some sort of trail already, go back and have a look at what would happen if you would apply this rule. Now, just to give you a little bit more, um, a little bit more guidance around this, we're going to focus on the price EMA. But as I said, it can be any, the process is the same, irrespective of trail type. So our trigger, well, let's use more than two times the original R level, or it can be equally more than two times ATR on entry. So our response, um, I should have used 20 to 10 on that. Uh, I've used 15 to 10, that's okay. You can do it in five increments um, if you like. Um, and of course, what you can do, so this is your primary, this is your primary EMA level. So it doesn't matter whether that's 15 or 20 or 30, whatever it is. And this is your adjusted EMA level can't see on the white can't see the pointer on the white screen so excuse the worriness but there you see we moved it from 15 to 10 or we can shorten the time frame so again we'd be specific we might say uh, if it's an hour chart we'll move into 50 to 30 if it's a 30 minute chart we'll move into 15 in the first instance just if it's an if it's hourly or below then it might be a good idea to shorten the time frame rather than shorten the ma um that's just a just have a look at the have a look at the difference the other thing is i should have included repeat um so in there I, the chance of me writing this legibly uh remote and repeat okay so again if you find that even with your new adjustment and again you write this in your training plan if you're going to repeat if it happens again if you get that gap between now your 10 and your current price being more uh, being more than two times uh then you can repeat it so you take it maybe down to a five ema does that make sense right and you must not ever ever despite what that little devil on your sh on one shoulder tells you don't readjust back so don't say oh it's still looking good now i'm gonna pull it back away again don't ever do that because what you're doing is you're moving away from system and you'll get over that if you've got a system that says if i've got trend continuation because you, you if you've got trend continuation or if i've got uh, a, a breakout next breakout or if i've got reversal then i'm in the position to be able to trade this again as long as you've got systems for different types of price action which are covered extensively in other sessions so there we go ladies and gentle people now, our next session, we're going to take it to the next level again. That in itself is probably, my guess is, probably a step, a, a step, if you like, the next level from where many of you are now. Even if you've had a trail, then that's something to consider. If you've never had a trail, I would focus on just picking the right one to start with. And you can look at this. Now, the other thing is, of course, you can measure this as you go. If you're journaling, which you should, uh, then you can say, right, okay, which would have been better? So you record actual trades in your journal with your, with your shortened impact. And next to that, you have another column which says, what would have happened if I'd not shortened? And anything, any evidence like that can help substantiate what you're doing, uh, give you confidence to stick, stick with it. There's nothing like confidence in your system to enable you to follow your plan. 
yeah onwards and upwards so the next session as i said we're going to take it to the next level again and there's a couple of neat tricks i'm going to tell you when we meet next time which are very ea -able. this one is very ea -able as well and perhaps we should have a model that does this or gives you the option to do this yeah it'd be fairly easy to insert because this is the sort of thing we're, we're looking to do with that with that event but there's no reason in the case of an event coming so if there's an event coming then we short we tighten the trail stop before the event happens but there's no reason why we can't look at volatility and say hey look the volatility has increased which is one of the things we'll talk about next week so we're basing it on actual uh, on volatility increase or a variance of that uh and do it anyway that's what next week's about that's what next wednesday gives you plenty of time uh to put things into practice uh apologies for uh the treasure iq thing on the bottom this is an odd slide obviously um but test the project uh discussed uh, and explore the, what would have happened if uh, and of course ultimately once you've got the evidence to say look this is a good way to go uh, then it should be written in your plan if you don't want to try this right now then what i would do is test it right now so you can do that if you've just started your trail so hey look what i'm going to do is i'm going to just record by the side what would have happened uh, i see this was a trade where the velocity gap was two times two times my original risk level two atr it was above that what would have happened if does that make sense anyway that's enough for now i've been banging on now for more than an hour quite surprisingly um i will see you maybe uh, for those of you who are still awake uh, and still can bear the, the prospect of me banging on again uh, in a horse race commentators type fashion when we get that cpi data released um if you do make it along to that that's great i will post the recording of this if you don't make that that's cool uh, i'll put the recording of this in the discord channel and i will also uh, make sure that it's available next week's session i'll post it again anyway all good uh, you guys take care either way i'll love and leave you quite safe we'll see you again very soon bye bye for now you're all very welcome thank you see you later trade safe and see you again soon bye bye for now